dann herzlich willkommen zurück bei Law and Order Legacies. Wir haben jetzt gerade das Feuer der Detective Benson als Zeugin abgeschlossen und kommen jetzt ins Kreuzfeuer. Nehme ich an. Genau. Heute treffen wir auf die Verteidigerin Christina Mullins. Mullins, wie auch immer. Erheben Sie Einspruch. Das muss ich mir kurz notieren. Einspruch, wenn sie regelwidrig agiert. Hier sind zwei ihrer Lieblingstricks. Sie verpackt werdende Kommentare in Fragen. Wie sollen wir, die, wir diese Lüge wirklich glauben? Es ist Provoku Provokation, also verpackte Aussagen als Frage formuliert. Und sie greift ihren Zeugen an, indem sie ihn als verdächtig und kriminell bezeichnet. Das ist Verleumdung. Also falsche Taten. Hm, gucken, ob wir kriegen. Nicht vergessen, Verleumdung ist ein direkter Angriff. Provokation. Verleumdung ist ein direkter Angriff. Okay, also Verleumdung. Sie sagt, Detective Benz ist ein total schlechter Kopf. Sie hängt damit drin irgendwas und, voll, und, und die Provokation. Das bedeutet, dass man ist Zweifel an der Aussage in einer Frage versteckt. Okay. Detective Benson, you testified that you saw the defendant, Chavez Trevino, shoot the victim. No, I testified that I turned around and saw Mr. Trevino with a smoking gun in his hand, about a second after I heard the shots. So you didn't actually see him do the shooting? Are we supposed to believe you're a relevant eyewitness? Objection. Badgering. Objection overruled. Ah. Immediately after the shooting, what did Mr. Trevino look like? I don't follow you. Was he composed? Calm? He was in possession of himself. Wasn't he yelling out, my baby, you murdered her? He said that, yes. He was out of his mind with grief. He was coming apart at the seams and you didn't see it? Really? I don't believe you. He was upset. Is your heart so cold, detective? Mm. Are you such a robot that you can't see another human in distress? Objection. Das ist ein direkter, das ist eine Argumentative. Objection overruled. Okay. Let's try this one more time. Was my client, Chavez Trevino, visibly shaken and distressed following the shooting? Yes. Did he appear rational, calm? No. Was his behavior at that moment consistent with a person in severe emotional distress? I... Yes. So despite any forethought or planning he might have shown previously, the defendant was clearly in distress when he fired his weapon. True? True? Yes. Thank you. That's all for this witness, Your Honor. Uh -huh. Das war doch eindeutig eine Provokation. Habe ich das jetzt falsch notiert? Wir wiederholen das Ganze nochmal. Wir wiederholen das nochmal. Okay. So, Einspruch. Sie verpackt werdende Kommentare. Sollen wir diese Lüge glauben? Werdende Kommentare in Fragen. Und sie greift ihre Zeugen an, indem sie ihn als verdächtig und kriminell bezeichnet. Verleumdung. Und die falschen Fragen stellen, sage ich jetzt mal, ist Provokation. Verleumdung, schlechter Kopf, dies, das. Okay. Detective Benson, you testified that you saw the defendant, Chavez Trevino, shoot the victim. No, I testified that I turned around and saw Mr. Trevino with a smoking gun in his hand, 
about a second after I heard the shots. So you didn't actually see him do the shooting? Are we supposed to believe you're a relevant eyewitness? The Objection. This was verleumdung. Badgering. Objection overruled. Aber Immediately after the shooting, what did Mr. Trevino look like? I don't follow you. Was he composed? Calm? He was in possession of himself. Wasn't he yelling out, my baby, you murdered her? He said that, yes. He was out of his mind with grief. He was coming apart at the seams and you didn't see it? Really? I don't believe you. He was upset. Objection. Badgering. Objection overruled. Is your heart so cold, Detective? Are you such a robot that you can't see another human in distress? Yeah, ja, aber jetzt. Das war wieder ein direkter Angriff. Wir werden Roboter Sustain. sonst irgendwas. Ms. Mullins, enough with the rhetoric. Let's try this one more time. Was my client, Chavez Trevino, visibly shaken and distressed following the shooting? Yes. Did he appear rational? Calm? No. Was his behavior at that moment consistent with a person in severe emotional distress? I... Yes. So despite any forethought or planning he might have shown previously, the defendant was clearly in distress when he fired his weapon. True? True? Yes. Thank you. That's all for this witness, Your Honor. I just got a message from Cormac. You know the gun we took off Chob Trevino? Yeah. It's a ballistics match to the one used in the preppy joggers murder. The joggers? The two kids who got killed in the park? That was in the 90s. It was 1998. Me and Lenny Briscoe caught the case, but we ran out of leads and were never able to close it. We got pulled off, actually. We burned the old man's ass pretty good. Oh, tough break. But, well, then how did Trevino get it? Yeah, good question, detective. This case has been on my mind since I got back. Then this falls in my lap. I feel like I owe it to Lenny. Ray, any way I can help out, I'm in. Thanks. Uh, nun ist die Verteidigung dran. Christina Mullins greift auf ihre üblichen Tricks zurück. Hier sind zwei neue Einsprüche. Na, sehr schön, nachdem es erst so gut geklappt hat. Hören sagen. Ist ein berechtigter Einspruch, wenn ein Zeuge jemanden zitiert, der nicht im Saal anwesend ist oder nicht für den Wahrheitsgehalt der wiedergegebenen Aussage entstehen kann. Also, Person nicht da oder nicht für den Wahrheitsgehalt der wiedergebenden Aussage einstehen kann. Na gut, ist beides gleich. Keine Fachkenntnisse bedeutet, dass die Aussage des Zeugen fundiertes Hintergrundwissen fehlt, wenn zum Beispiel zu einem medizinischen Sachverhalt aussagt. Okay. Ja, hier ist ja Fachkenntnisse. Okay. Mickey, in the weeks after your sister's murder, how did your dad act? Crazy. My dad has PTSD again. It all came back. He needs different treatment. Objection. Mickey Trevino is not a psychiatrist, Your Honor. He's not qualified to diagnose his father. Sustained. Mr. Trevino, please limit your comments to what you saw. Tell us the behavior you observed. He, he couldn't control his temper. He, he would like yell when the phone rang or like if a dog was barking two miles away. I didn't know what to do. When Rachel was killed, I expected him to be really sad or d depressed, but not, you know, not angry. And this behavior, had you ever seen it before? No, but my sister did. Objection. Hearsay. Regrettably, the witness's sister is deceased and can't testify to the truth of this statement. Sustained. The jury will disregard that last remark. When? After he got home from the Gulf War, 1991. 
Pop had his troubles with the law. A felony assault charge, some other bullshit, uh, uh, some other nonsense. Did you think he would hurt anyone? My uncle said he was getting dangerous. Look, like uh. I said before, I thought he would be sad. I didn't think my dad would actually hurt someone. He's a good man, honestly. Do you think your father was in his right mind when he shot Alexander Baran? No. When my sister got murdered, I tell you, it smashed something deep inside my dad. And the idea that this fat Russian bastard could walk away scot-free because of some technicality? My dad did the world a favor. Thank you, Mickey. No further questions. Okay. Dann geht's nur weiter. Mickey Trevino gehört Ihnen. Bringen Sie ihn so weit zuzugeben, dass er wusste, dass sein Vater Baran töten oder versuchen wollte, eine Waffe zu kaufen. How do you and your father feel about Alexander Baran? How do we feel? Are you freaking serious? Easy, Mr. Trevino. Sorry, Judge. We hate the man. Alexander Baran is the guy who killed my little sister. My pop said he didn't care what happened to him. He said he would gladly kill Baran so we could go to hell and kill him again. He's a fat cat with an army of lawyers ready to help him weasel out of everything he does. You know this guy. Every day you read about him. Oh, he loves to do the crime, but he does not do the time. Nope, not these boys. Dankeschön. Das war schon mal sehr gut. Did your father try to buy a gun a week before the attack? Yeah, I guess. Did you try to help sign for it? Yeah, so what? Your father was convicted of felony assault in 1992. He's not allowed to have a gun. Did you know about his conviction? Nah, I, I didn't know nothing about that. A man's got a right to defend himself. Actually, when he's a convicted felon, he doesn't. Okay. Where did he get the gun he used in court? I told the cops already. I don't know where he got the gun. You sure you didn't help him? I've never seen it before. I didn't even know he had one. You sure you didn't help him get it? You are under oath, Mr. Trevino. I... I did not help him. Pop smuggled it in under his jacket. I don't know how he made it past security, but he did. Aber hat er gesagt, dass er dabei geholfen hat? Ah. Did you ever hear your father threaten to kill Baran? Hurt? Yes. Kill? No. Genau das hat er gesagt. That's not true. You just told us your father said he'd like to, quote, kill Baran and go to hell so he could kill him again. That was, that was like a, just a figure of speech. Or the truth. Why didn't you get help for your dad? He seemed rational. So he was in control? Enough so that you weren't worried? Yeah, I wasn't worried. So where's the PTSD? I guess I didn't see it then. So maybe he didn't have it. That's not what I meant. He did. So why didn't you get him help? Either you saw he was out of control and you did nothing, or you saw nothing. Hey, there was, there was no way to know what my dad was going to do. He was crazy. How could I possibly have known it would come to this? Wie können Sie die Geschworenen überzeugen? Er meint, dass sein Vater er nicht unabhängig ist. Er meint, er habe gewusst, sein Vater von ihm zu kaufen. He already had a felony assault in his past. He tried to illegally buy a gun and he told you he wanted Baran dead. If I was my old man, I'd have been a little worried. You want us to believe your dad just snapped. You say he hated Alexander Baran, knew in his heart Baran was guilty. He tried to buy a gun, but couldn't. So he found one some other way. 
Then he smuggled it through security, stayed cool until he had a fair shot, and fired an accurate pattern right into his intended victim. Now, Mickey, does that really sound like someone who just suddenly snapped? Objection. Withdrawn. None of this would have happened if people acted right. Rachel writes a, a nasty blog, and this guy Baran kills her. My dad's going out of his mind, and his doctor goes on frickin' vacation. Vacation, can you imagine? It ain't right. Everybody fails us, and we gotta suffer for it. No further questions for this witness, Your Honor. Okay, die geschworene Stimme der Anklage zu, das ist schon mal sehr gut. Die Verteidigung wird ein paar neue Tricks versuchen. Höchste Zeit, ihre Einsprüche aufzufrischen, einen neuen zu lernen. Oh Gott, noch mehr Einsprüche. Nicht vergessen, Hören sagen bedeutet, dass der Zeuge Aussagen aus dritter Hand wiederholt. Und beachten Sie keine Fachkenntnisse, heißt es, ein Zeuge über medizinische, rechtliche oder sonstige Spezifi Spezifi spezifische Sachlagen spricht, mit denen er sich eigentlich nicht auskennt. Hier kommt eine neue Mutmaßung, dass ein Zeuge darüber spekuliert, was eventuell hätte passieren können. Also Mutmaßung ist gleich Spe Spekulation. Dies gilt vor Gericht nicht als zulässiger Beweis. Mr. Trevino, why did you shoot Alexander Baron? He murdered my daughter. He was gonna go free. He was going to walk. Ja. Objection. Das ist eine Mutmaßung. The witness can't know whether Mr. Baron was guilty or whether he would have gone free because he stopped the trial dead. Sustained. Can you tell us about Alexander Baron's diplomatic immunity? Hey, I'm not a lawyer, but I know what that means. He just gets to skate. The law says he can run off to Russia. Ja. Objection. Er hat er weiß davon nichts, also keine Fachkenntnisse. Witness stated he wasn't a lawyer. The diplomatic immunity rules are actually very complex, Your Honor. Alexander Baron's status was still under review even at the time of the trial. Sustained. Mr. Trevino, can you take us back to 1991 and your experience after the Gulf War? Yeah, I was a ranger in Iraq. I, uh, I saw a lot of stuff. When I got back home, I had some uh, trouble settling in. What kind of trouble? I was never a violent guy before, but suddenly anything could set me off. Uh, I fought all the time. I, I couldn't sleep. My wife divorced me. I wanted to die. Nein, natürlich nicht. And what did the army say? The doctors said I had PTSD. They, uh, they said it interfered with my ability to regulate my emotions. So I joined a therapy group. I took meds for a while for the depression. Got myself back together. What might have happened if you hadn't had therapy? I don't know. Maybe gone crazy, maybe hurt somebody. Uh, I might have snapped, like I did that day in court. Objection. Mutmaßung. Cause for speculation. Defense is asking the witness to relate an imaginary scenario. Sustained. Let's focus on reality, Miss Mullins. But you got yourself back together. You lived a normal life. So what happened recently to bring it all back? Rachel. Your daughter was tragically murdered, and the main suspect appeared to you to have diplomatic immunity. Objection. Speculation. Overruled. Defense is well within its rights to use words like suspect and appears in relation to the victim. She was my beautiful baby girl. He had no right. How could this happen in the 21st century in America? An innocent girl gets killed, the cops pin the blame on this scumbag, and still... He might walk away. As a man, as a father, I couldn't let that happen. She looked to me to protect her. All her life, I, I was a daddy, right? And I failed. And you failed. You didn't protect her when she needed it most. What use is all your legal garbage if you can't put a killer behind bars? So, as a father, it was up to me to put that wrong to right. Because no one else was gonna. And now my baby girl can rest with some kind of dignity. Thank you, Mr. Trevino. And sorry for your loss. Mr. Cutter, your witness. 
Uh, defense requests a short recess, Your Honor. We wish to confer with the people about a plea deal. Well, make it quick. We're all on pins and needles. Okay, jetzt wollen sie einen Deal vorschlagen. Da bin ich mal gespannt, wie Mike, der Deal aussehen Abby, soll. let's not let a grieving father go to jail for the rest of his life. Can we talk deal? Depends. What are you offering, Christina? One year in county plus probation. You give us the time. He doesn't belong in jail. You're kidding, right? He's a killer. I got the blood stains on my jacket to prove it. Here's our counter offer. Wenn sie sich vor Gericht sehr gut geschlagen haben, können sie das maximale Strafmaß verlangen. Mord zweiten Grades 25 Jahre Haft. Wenn sie sich aber nicht bürgersicher sind, sollten sie eine weniger strenge Strafe vorschlagen, mit der auch die Verteidigung einverstanden sein könnte. Denken Sie daran, wenn die Waage der Gerechtigkeit zu Ihren Ungunsten steht, wird die Verteidigung Ihr Angebot wahrscheinlich ablehnen. Möchte no deal. Hier. We're taking this one all the way. Wollen Sie bitte zu Ende durchziehen? Das war's. Sie haben gut gekämpft. Zeit für eine Verurteilung. Vermeiden Sie Aussagen über Trevinos geistige Verfassung und das Verfassung und das verwirrt die Geschworenen. Fokus auf die Vorsätzlichkeit. What was your intent when you brought the gun into your daughter's murder trial? I don't know. I just I don't know. Answer the question, Mr. Trevino. What was your intent? To kill him, I guess. Good. You say you had the intent to kill Baran. When did you decide you wanted to kill him? I didn't really. I don't know. It, it was a feeling. Y you gotta understand. Was it when you tried to buy a gun? I didn't try to buy a gun. It, it wasn't premeditated like that. We already presented evidence that you did try to buy a gun several weeks before the killing. I, I don't know. Uh, that morning, I guess. Good. PDBS sprechen wir nicht an. Kann verwirrend sein. In the hours in between that morning when you decided to kill Mr. Baron and that afternoon when you did it, what did you do? Nothing. I, uh, I prepared. Ja, ich hab's vorbereitet. Sehr gut. You prepared? You didn't call anyone for help or talk to anyone? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I called my doctor. I tried to act responsibly, so, so I called him. He said, don't worry about it. Aber wie? Achso, ja klar, er war ja im Urlaub. Hat er selber gesagt. Your son already told us your doctor was on vacation. Nice try, Mr. Trevino. The VA has a hotline for PTSD, correct? Yeah. But you didn't call them for help, because by then you had already decided to kill Baran, and you systematically followed through on your plan, didn't you? I was insane. You were angry. There's a huge difference. Objection! Good. Bei dieser Aussage stand die Geschworene auf der Seite der Stadtanwaltschaft. Sie haben gewonnen bis zu Punkte. Stand die Geschworene Stimme der Anklage zu. Dann schauen wir da jetzt mal. Chav Trevino did shoot Alexander Baran. It's true. But the important question is why. Under our laws, the charge of murder may be reduced in the event of extreme emotional distress. His pride and joy. His daughter Rachel ripped away from him forever by a rapist and a murderer who then tried to claim diplomatic immunity and run away instead of accepting his punishment like a man. It was too much. Extreme emotional distress. 
Chavez Trevino only did what many of us fantasize we would do in his place. Was it right? No, he knows it wasn't right. But at the time, when he acted, right and wrong were drowned out by a raging storm of flashbacks, stress, and injustice. With therapy, he can heal again. Give him that chance. Look into your hearts and ask yourself if Chav Trevino is a cold-blooded murderer like Alexander Baran or just a brave and broken father doing the only thing that made sense. Jetzt können Sie sich direkt an die Geschworenen wenden. Überzeugen Sie sie. Wählen Sie Themen aus, die Ihre Argumentation stützen und meiden Sie solche, die Mitleid für Chef Torino erwecken oder Sie ungehobelt erscheinen lassen. I think the defense would like to confuse you about what is extreme emotional distress and what is a father's natural grief over his daughter's unfair death to set a precedent that every grieving father has the right to gun down the suspected killer is a very, very dangerous one indeed. We agree that within these walls, we must respect due process. We respect the law, no matter how we might personally feel about the defendants before us. Chavez Trevino didn't see it that way. He thought this was just a room, a place where he could barge in and draw a weapon and fire with no regard. Chav Trevino said, the hell with justice, I want revenge. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the people have shown you the evidence that Chavez Trevino's acts were premeditated. Not a burst of impulse, not a symptom of his PTSD. Mr. Trevino killed a man in cold blood. Good. Das war das Abschlussplädoyer. Have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. And how do you find? We find the defendant, Chavez Trevino, guilty of murder in the first degree. We thank you for your service. Defendant is remanded into custody until sentencing. Mike! Abby! The headlines aren't pretty, are they, Jack? I'll take this one on the chin. The only way to wield the power of this office responsibly is through the equal and just application of the law. We don't get to bend the rules. That just leads to chaos. Oh, and good job. Ray, thought you'd be out having a drink. Nah, I'm going through some old files on the Preppy case. Trying to tie the gun to Trevino? And coming up cold. I wish Lanny was still around. He was good at this kind of thing. Well, this ought to cheer you up. Turns out, Mickey Trevino is an HVAC contractor for the city. Okay. Guess where he did a midnight repair 24 hours before the Alexander Baran trial? Superior court. He snuck the gun into an air duct. Shall we go have a word with him? Oh, that's going to end the I don't know. Ah ne, das war der erste. Leute, Let's Lead Episode 1 Revenge. Ja, ja. Gut. Und in diesem Sinne, ganz lieben Dank fürs Zuschauen. Wenn es euch gefallen hat, lasst einen Daumen nach oben da. Schreibt doch gerne was in die Kommentare. Den haben wir jetzt so gut überstanden wie möglich. Ähm, mit dem, mit dem Gerichtsverhandlung muss ich mir noch ein bisschen anschauen, mal gucken, wie das so funktioniert. Und ich würde sagen, sehen wir uns am nächsten Teil wieder, wenn es darum geht. Lord of Legends, wir klären die Fälle auf. Bis dann, tschüss und ciao, euer Satu Dubio.